My friends, I'm glad to welcome you back on the channel. You know that I'm always glad to see you. Oh, and today we're gonna have what I call a Friday repair. Even though it's Monday, uh, I'm gonna call it a Friday repair. So, quick story short, I have bought this uh, airless paint sprayer from China. Uh, it cost me 270, almost 80 euros. Obviously for this kind of money, I'm not expecting a top-notch machine. I know that Graco, for example, cost uh, two, three, four thousands. And this is only 270, uh, but it came totally destroyed. It came totally broken. If you ever saw the first uh, Ace Ventura movie and you remember how he delivered the box in the beginning, uh, the box that this thing came in felt exactly like this box. And when I opened it, uh, I knew right away that this stuff is uh, totaled. So I've contacted the seller and they gave me a full refund for this. Uh, so I'm totally fine with it. Uh, so basically I got this unit for free. Uh, does it work? Uh, no in this state, but I think I can get it to the state uh, where I can actually use it for work. Let me show you what is broken. Obviously, you can see that the legs are like uh, squeezed together. They should be like at the greater angle, so it stands sturdy, but right now it's just it doesn't almost stand at all. On the side here, there is this filter assembly and you connect the pressure gauge and a spray gun here. And uh, on the bottom, you connect this with turn pipe uh, so you can uh, clean the machine. Here you connect the main uh, pipe that takes in the paint. But anyways, with this filter assembly, there is this valve that's been, actually I can take it out. It's been broken. You can see that this pin is like squished and, uh, and yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, luckily, I found one of these on uh, eBay and for 10 bucks, I'm gonna get it uh, sometime soon, but you never know, maybe a week, maybe a couple months. So next up, you can also see that this uh, filler assembly is just, it's just wobbling. It just doesn't hold in place. Oh, the screw came out. You see how bent the screw is? I think there was an impact on this side and it just kind of bent this leg over and broke this and broke uh, this plastic guard here. Uh, and also this is supposed to be adjustment knob, uh, but it's like, it's, yeah, it's totaled. Uh, so I've already taken out the screws. It is pretty simple inside. I'm gonna take this apart and uh, show you. So on the inside, it looks pretty right. The relay uh, seems to be working fine. However, here we have this thing. It is meant to control the pressure inside this filter assembly. And this mechanism, uh, yeah, it's not in the best shape. Uh, the part of it is here. Uh, the other part is here. It's, uh, it's broken here. Uh, however, I think I can build this whole thing up uh, from scraps. So this is how it works. Uh, this came from here. I'm just gonna uh, put it away. You can see that there is this kind of a valve here uh, with this pin. And when this chamber gets pressurized, this pin is kind of uh, sticking out. Uh, when there is no pressure, I can really like push it in uh, with my finger if I want to. And then this thing is attached to here uh, like so. And there is another pin inside. And when you screw in this knob, uh, you can see that this uh, pin inside of it moves and kind of pushes this inside. And uh, depending how, uh, how much you adjust this, you can adjust the pressure. And I think the pressure is simply controlled by this micro switch. I think this one is broken. And usually, you know, on a micro switch, you have another uh, kind of a pin that goes like, like so and I think it was here before. And so depending how much you adjust this, it should trigger the micro switch. And this micro switch is uh, connected to this relay, uh, which shuts down uh, the engine inside of a paint sprayer. So I think I need to get a new micro switch like this. Uh, let me take it out. Yeah, I can see that there is this uh, broken off corner on this micro switch. I think there used to be a pin so yeah, I'm gonna try to find a micro switch like this. And meanwhile, I can actually take out this knob here with the pin. There's just a spring and a this pin inside of it. And this part, uh, I think I can make a new one. 
So on this thing, there are two of these, I'm gonna call them threaded inserts, and these are not the metric threads, so uh, I don't really know what threads they are, so I'm gonna try to use those inserts. And as there is a lot of parts missing from this uh, contraption, I cannot glue it well, so I don't think it's going to be holding on uh, if I glue it like this. So I'm just gonna make a new one from this uh, chunk of aluminum, which is almost perfect size. Let's stick this one in into our mini lathe. So, check this out, I've made this uh, overall shape of this part. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a really good exercise for me to practice on the lathe, and yeah, I think it went great. So we have the first shoulder here, uh, it's for this threaded insert that I told you about earlier. Uh, it's like, the fitment is so good, I like it so much. I cannot insert it all the way in right now because it's uh, bent here, and we'll have to maybe hammer it in and uh, glue it in. And I have another shoulder on the other side. It's for the same thread, uh, threaded insert to sit. And we have another shoulder uh, zip inside and it's gonna hold this uh, pin. Oh, actually it's going in like this, you see? And uh, it's the same like on this part. That's perfect. So my next task will be to make this kind of a cutout section and uh, the micro switch uh, actually sits here. And actually today I went to the shop and found the same exact micro switch that was here. Uh, it's gonna take a couple of days to arrive, but uh, yeah, I found it. And uh, so I can make <laughs> this whole thing work, hopefully. So yeah, I'm gonna try to make this uh, cutout section right now. Uh, if I would have a mill, that would be like a 10 minute job, but unfortunately I don't have it. So, I think it's gonna take some time. Yeah, this part feels really good, I like it. So after like an hour with the Dremel and a file plus the drill press, uh, this is what I uh, get. I could finish it a little better, but it's just not worth my time. I think it's gonna take a couple more hours to make it perfect, but it's just uh, not worth it. It's going to be inside the, inside the machine. So this is the original and this is the new one. Uh, we have some uh, flat area for the micro switch. Uh, it should work. Nicely. Uh, now I'm gonna try to remove this uh, threaded insert and install it into here. Uh, maybe I'm gonna add uh, some set screw to hold it better in place and glue it in on some... Uh, uh, we'll see what I have.
So this bit is ready. I'm very happy. Even though I've spent two evenings making it, I've learned a lot on how to use the lathe and I think I getting better. Slowly, little by little, but yeah. Uh, so while I wait for the micro switch, it should arrive somewhere next week. Uh, let's deal uh, with, the, with the other issues. So we need to bend back the legs. So, for you it was one second, for me it was two weeks. Yeah, that's how long it took me to receive the parts that I have ordered, but it was worth it. Check this out. So this was the original micro switch uh, that was broken. And check this out, I found the exactly the same one. And I'm so happy, I think I can uh, totally make this thing work. Also, remember the broken valve that was uh, it was here. Exactly the same valve. It was only 10 bucks. Such a bargain. And also I got some new screws because the old screws, uh, yeah, they, they've seen some better days. So let's hook up the new micro switch and attach it to the piece that we've made. I think it's supposed to be somewhere like this. Uh, I think I'm just gonna crazy glue it. I don't think I can do any other attachment right now. Uh, crazy glue should work. It's plastic and it's metal. Oops. So the part is in place and uh, I've set it to the lowest pressure now. I'm gonna hook it up now and try it with water and if it's gonna work, I'm gonna shit myself. This is exactly what's going to happen if it works. So I'm all hooked up here, we have some water in a white bucket. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in now and uh, we're gonna test if it actually works. So excited man, I hope it's not gonna blow up on me. Yep. Okay, I got it to prime up. It's pumping water, as you can see. Now I'm gonna flip this valve and the pressure is going to go inside of this hose. And let's see if it's going to switch off when we hit some pressure. <laughs> yes! Let's see if I can adjust it. Yep, I can totally add some pressure. It's going to shoot some... Yep. Totally works. <laughs> yes. Check this out. Perfect. And the adjustment does work as well. Look, we're a little over a thousand PSI. And if I add on a little bit, it should start pumping. Yep. 2,000, maybe a bit too, too much. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I don't think I should go over 3,000 PSI. And voila, I've put the original housing on and it looks like nothing has ever happened to it. Uh, totally, like a new product. Repairing a tool like this, making a new part for it, feels really good, man. So the valve was, uh, I think it was 11 euros. The chunk of aluminium that we've used to make the new part, uh, I've paid seven euros for it. And you know, some workshop consumables like glues, lube, uh, some epoxy, extra bolts, I think maybe it was like five euros, which gives us uh, 23 euros in total. And you know, as I got a full refund for the machine, which was almost 300 euros, 
23 euros to repair it? It's not that bad. I bought an airless prayer for 23 euros. Does it get any better than this? So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Friday Repairs, even though it's not Friday. Would you like to see more repair videos? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for sticking around with me. Destroy the like button with your powerful click. And I'll see you soon. Bye.